Welcome back. It's day three here at the Rocky Mountain Blacksmithing Conference. Things are just getting ready to start. Everybody's going to be heading off for breakfast here pretty quick. Today, Patrick Quinn will be starting us off. I'm not sure what Patrick's going to make, so we'll have to sit in the bleachers and see what he's got planned for us. Then later, Peter Ross and Matt Jenkins will finish up their demonstrations and we'll finish the day off with a silent auction and the iron and the hat drawing. Then a, a barbecue is the last thing and that's pretty much it for the conference. So I hope you've enjoyed the little look at it, but we'll uh, join Patrick Quinn here in just a little bit and see what he's got planned for us. All right, guys, uh, today we're going to try to wrap up a small sculpture that's pretty similar to uh, some of the images I showed last night. <laughs> I want to pass around this forging that uh, Stu and I made yesterday um, <clears throat> so you guys can touch it and have a close look at, at what's going on there. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to punch several holes into those. Got a center punch here and I'm just trying to give it a quick brush so I can see it. And my punch is a flat bottom punch so I'm just going to try my best to line it up. Typically, I, I don't go over a hole in the anvil unless I have to. <laughs> but if you get that material very thin uh, between the anvil and the punch, it gets really cold <clears throat> and brittle. So when you flip it over, put the punch on the other side, if it's thin enough, it should shear right out. check after the first hit and make sure I'm in a good spot. The quicker you realize you're a little off, the easier it is to correct. The deeper you go, the harder, the harder it is. So I'm real thin there and I'm even pouring a little water in there just to try to cool that plug off. And then we have a nice bullseye right there. There you go. That's so hard. And so obviously that's going to distort my hole a little bit. I'm going to clean it up that way.
blade here. I had this hole punched. Then I cut in right to the middle of the hole. And then when I bent that out, I, I noticed that uh, I really like sort of this detail that happens right here, but it had this also weird portion up at the top that I didn't, that I couldn't get rid of. Um, so this one is much nicer. Through that process, I realized it would be much nicer if you cut in and meet at the top of the hole. That way when you bend this over, once this hole meets that portion that's bent, it can almost just be a, uh, a straight line there. And then this actually is like a little bit more dynamic of, of a part of that. So, and that's the kind of stuff that when you're doing this sort of like non-traditional kind of experimentation, um, you know, I could draw the sculpture over and over again in my sketchbook, but I never would have been able to predict. Uh, we could have predicted the cracking probably about the hole, but once the hole was there, it took the trial and error for me to, to like a result, which was cutting at the top of the hole rather than the middle of the hole. And, um, you know, I, I like to work directly in the material rather than at the drawing board. Um, I do realize that there's lots of valuable things that can be figured out um, by really careful drawing, but a lot of my work, um, I prefer to just kind of figure it out as I go with sculptural stuff. Um, so that's a little bit about, about that. Yeah. I hope so. So this obviously is a lot less important um, for accuracy because we're not fitting anything up in this hole.
All right, so I want to cut through um, without going from both sides because I don't want to try to match a cut up from both sides, um, especially since I didn't lay it out at all. So I use that aluminum as a cut plate so I can cut all the way through without going into the anvil, which obviously is good for the anvil, but also prevents me from having to dress my hot cut all the time.
Well, as they say, the party is over. The conference is at its end. We've had the last demonstration. We've done a iron in the hat, a silent auction, had a barbecue and a membership meeting for the members of the organization. And pretty much now it's just a little bit of open forge time in the shop, packing up, cleaning up, and everybody will head home in the morning until next year. And I hope you can find something like this in your area or something you can travel to reasonably. They have these all over the world. They're not just this one, not just the Abana Conference, but there are things going on in Europe. There are things going on in other parts of the world. Hunt out what's going on closest to you, and I really encourage you try to attend something like this sometime. I know they're expensive. It takes some planning, but it's well worth it. It's a great time. You really learn, you really get inspired, and you really do spark your imagination. So I hope this was worth, worthwhile. I hope you enjoyed that little look at the conference. We'll see you back in the shop early next week. So get out to your shop, make something, but do stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you later.